At any time we get late word, ABC News will break into this game. And obviously they will have an update for you at halftime. What we have here, Indiana and Michigan, and for the Wolverines, a rather desperate situation. Coach Fisher telling us earlier this morning that if Michigan is to have any chance at all of getting back to the NCAA tournament, they must upset Indiana here this afternoon. So we'll come back. Jim Valvano and Mark Jones will be working with me. It's Indiana and Michigan on ABC. Indiana and Michigan, and because they've lost two in a row, Bob Knight will go to his small or three-guard lineup, which he employed against Michigan and Ann Arbor, a 10-point Indiana win. So countering that, Fisher also will come with a smaller lineup as Hunter will be on the bench. Indiana wearing the home whites. And, Jimmy, what do you make of all the lineup adjustments by both coaches? Well, I don't think it's because anybody's superstitious, but it is unusual that that's the only other time Coach Knight started that lineup. I just think he thinks it's going to play well against a quick athletic Michigan. Continue. Needs rebounding, Jamal Meeks, the third guard, inserted in the starting lineup. He puts the Hoosiers ahead with a tap-in. Now, remember, late against Iowa, Indiana did not block out, giving the Hawkeyes extra time. First turnover by the Wolverines. Ball goes to the Hoosiers as Talley has given it up. Michigan's backcourt is really effective, Brent. Demetrius Caleb is their leading scorer with 19 points a game, and he's in, been in double figures every game this year. From the top of the circle, the foul against Taylor. Greg Graham will come, and what about our storyline here today? You mentioned Michigan in order to win. Their backcourt's done a lot. They've got to improve their front court scoring. They've got to keep Indiana, as we just mentioned here, off the free throw line. They just committed a foul. Why? Because Indiana scores more points from the free throw and their opponents have even taken shots. Indiana wants good shot selection, mainly because their percentage, when they shoot 50% or more, they generally win the basketball game, and they want to stop the backcourt performance of Michigan. Cheney misfiring that foul obviously before he shot for a time we thought they'd be stepping up to the free throw line so Michigan comes down Riley number 42 is the big man down low coach Fisher hoping that he bulks up over the course of the next year or so gives him a little more strength inside the team leader is Caleb ball deflected out of bounds Brent I like Michigan's patience it reflects what you said at the top just how big this game is for them. They're being cautious and patient each possession. Two years and one NCAA championship for Coach Steve Fisher. Deflected by Indiana and therefore out of bounds. Good hustling play there by Jamal Meeks, the junior guard from Freeport, Illinois. And he will bring it up and now this is Lyndon Jones, number four. You'll see 40 and 32 for Indiana. They're the main men offensively. Cheney is 40. Eric Anderson, 32, has not yet touched it. Cheney's a left-handed shooter. Anderson, with a good outside shot, had pulled his game up to the top of the circle. Michigan making it tough for Indiana to get it in. Good interception that time by Riley, and that was good half-court defense by the Wolverines. And Bob Knight mentioned about the problems with unforced errors, to borrow the tennis term, something where you make a mistake yourself, and that was an indication there. He's got to cut them out. Bosco with a good outside shot, misfiring, and an easy rebound, and that's what hurt them against Iowa, as Michael Talley comes up with a field goal. Anderson missing, and Bosco caught the ball on the other side. Talley was sealed up, had no place to go, turned it over on the pass. Jones in the middle. Indiana for the layup, and it's changed. Outstanding judgment by senior Lyndon Jones that time. He didn't force that break. He waited, he got the trailer, and got an easy let. No, Brent, for Indiana to win, they must have, they must shoot over 50%, really, because they're rebounding. There is no rebounding margin. They average about 33 boards a game, and so do their opponents. Out of bounds. So some careless ball handling mistakes here in the early going by Michigan. Four turnovers already in this game. 
And right away, Coach Fisher goes to his bench as Freddie Hunter, a wonderful story, a star in a three-on-three -three league and scouted by one of the managers. He was also on an intramural team that won the school championship. And here he is on the floor now for the Wolverines. Hey, Brent, that's both good and bad. It's a nice story, but when, you, when you've got walk-ons from intramurals starting or you're a guy off the bench, you might be in trouble. <laughs> they won't be in trouble if they recruit as well as some folks think they are going to for next year. I know they've got some good prospects headed there as Anderson comes in and drew the foul and maybe you can tell us about the recruiting job that Fisher and Michigan have done. Well I don't think there'll be any walk-ons making the club from the three-on-three -three league but uh, Jawan Howard the 6'10 youngster out of Chicago is just a he's a big time player. Jimmy King from listen it's from Plano Texas. Two guys Ray Jackson also from Houston Texas. They got some kind of Texas connection but obviously they're waiting for the big guy Chris Weber from Country Day in Detroit. Detroit, and if he goes there, then they've had a marvelous retreat. It's already a good one, but then they bring in two of the better players in the country, and they'll be right back. And then the intramural players. Nice free throw play again by Indiana, and Michigan's out of bounds. A fifth turnover. Can you believe it? A little jittery here. Michigan knowing that they have to start a win streak to play their way into the field of 64. They could be headed to the NIT. You no, know, Brett, the old adage, if you play the way you practice, well, then Indiana, before this is over, is going to get it going, because they practiced very well yesterday. No shot. Foul against Michigan. Bosco, number 32. What a difference for Fisher's front court when you look at this lineup. Well, we talked about that they have to get some points with his Mills fought look at those numbers look at this year three three ten and six and that makes it a lot tough all of a sudden they've become an outside a perimeter game team Cheney hits a three and he breaks out with a with a strong start here against the Wolverines eight two Indiana now this is the one thing that Fisher did not want to have happen he said if we fall behind by 16 I don't think Indiana is going to kick this one away he said we have to hold off the initial burst, and that has him concerned right now as he looks at the clock. 16-13, he's already down by six. That's right, and Calvert Cheney hitting that three-point. You might ask, how many three-pointers does Indiana normally hit? They only make about eight a game, uh, Brent, so they don't, excuse me, they only take eight a game. They only attempt eight three-pointers a game in contrast to the Ricky Patinos and some of the other clubs in the country who throw up almost 30 a game. Another foul on the inside against the Wolverines. Lyndon Jones was coming down the baseline that time with the ball. And that is going to be the second personal on Taylor. And a young man's coming in by the name of Tolbert, Tony Tolbert. And Bob Knight does not like to see this youngster. He says he kills them. Every time they play against him, he has a career night. He is 6'4 guard out of the Detroit area. Number four, Tony Tolbert checking in. And this is what really, in effect, wound up costing them the game against the Hawkeyes. And Bob said, here we go again. They gave up 34 free throws to the Hawkeyes that night and made only 19. And I believe he told us something like they left 15 on the table in that game. And we all know that as you get closer to tournament time and big games, most of those games determine at the free throw line. But at the defensive end, let's point out that the Hoosiers have given the Wolverines only two shots. It hasn't been a turnover, it's been a mistake. That time Riley on an easy looking turnaround. They have a size advantage down low and that they'll go back for more of that. But they don't, Michigan is not at the depth though Indiana has and we'll see if that takes its toll as the game goes on. 20 was Greg Graham. Michigan's ball. Anderson complaining that it was deflected by Michigan, but they're not going to get the call. It's going to go over to the Wolverines. And we'll be back to Bloomington in a moment. Chris had its team assembled out there on the floor, Jimmy. Wanted to tell the season's not over. It looked like they're taking their team picture. You remember down in Duke how he moved the youngsters out away from the bench? He didn't want them harassed. Perhaps he feels the same thing is going to happen here. Different crowd here. I think you can sit <laughs> right where you should. Duke, you should go in the middle of the floor sometime. <laughs> Maybe outside the camera. 15-24, 9-4, Indiana with the lead, Michigan with the ball. Protecting the ball has been a problem for the Wolverines. 
Tolbert, four, holding it. That strong half-court man-to-man defense. Tolbert did not get the bounce that time. Anderson blocked out perfectly. Great. Did get a great job of Demetrius Caleb. He just couldn't get the best ball at all. Rattles out. So far, Caleb has not taken a shot in this game, and there's a bad pass on the breakout. They give it back for a layup. He lost control underneath. Meeks could not keep possession, and for the Wolverines, Freddie Hunter with a gimmick. It's amazing. This is what Bob Knight was stressing in practice yesterday, the unforced error, the, where they have the ball in their hands and they lose it, the missed free throw. Anderson rattles in the deuce. Michigan looking for Caleb. Meeks hounding him, got in on his side, and Caleb pull up short, and Anderson muscles out another rebound. Whips it to Jones, who's cut off on the baseline. It was sealed up and got it over to Anderson. Oh, Eric Anderson is on fire right now. And Lyndon Jones, who's made two outstanding passes as the senior, has some court presence, didn't panic in that double team. Shoot the baseline to Caleb and Jones fouling, putting Caleb on the line. So difficult, Brent, to, to win at this level basketball without an inside-outside game. And that really is where Michigan is lacking right now. They've got good perimeter players. They play solid defense. They certainly play hard. But they've got the only one option in low, Riley. I mean, when you're playing a team like Indiana, they take things away from you. Damon Bailey checks in for the first time, and Mark Jones exploring that family tragedy, which has affected the young man's concentration, I'm sure. His sister, Courtney, battling leukemia nearby in Bedford, and of course, Courtney's women's team. We want to pass along our congratulations to all those girls. What excitement that was as Bedford North Lawrence won the title. Last year it was Damon Bailey and the boys team. The girls lost in the finals, but they battled back, went unbeaten, and won the championship. It's the first time that I, I've really witnessed the Indiana High School uh, tournament. I didn't realize they play two games the same day. Same day. You play the semi, you come back at That's night. amazing. 15,000 Market Square Arena in uh, Indianapolis. Just a, just a wonderful story. Let's do this nationally. Let's go national NCAA tournament everybody in let's all play would that be great, great pass by Bailey foul against the Wolverines we got a moment is they're coming up to the free throw line here's what we were talking about this is the Bedford team with the ball and there is Courtney watching her teammates seal up this championship and it was just a tremendous moment as the final seconds ticked away and the girls celebrating there. Oh, it's great. I, I think that Iowa and uh, Indiana have more interest in women's high school basketball than any of the programs that I'm around. But is there a nicer scene in sport than when they everybody jumps on each everybody after? I don't care what it is, pros, high school, college. I made a film, a 20 minute film of just that, just victory celebrations. Indiana's defense making it tough for Michigan to get its shots. Foul down away, going over to Indiana. The personal foul of Michigan, number four, Cody Colbert. That's seven team fouls already on Michigan and only one on Indiana. Normally that'll bring a coach like Fisher to his feet. He'll start to work on the officials a little bit when he sees that discrepancy. Oh, he's such a gentleman. No, he's looking at him. He's, he couldn't coach in the Big East, I don't think. Now, to look at him, what a nice man. How'd you like to start it out with, with six wonderful? straight and win the national championship? I feel like I want to go to church and listen to him speak. <laughs> What a great job he did a couple of years ago winning that NCAA championship, beating Seton Hall in overtime out in Seattle. That's a moment that Wolverine fans will never forget. Riley gets it back and he's fouled. There are places you can put the ball on the floor and 
places you can't. That's a place you can't. That's a dribble that Riley got away with. It's not going anywhere. It's not a productive, it's not a power dribble. Watch this, you're gonna spin against Michigan's, against Indiana's health defense. Look at it, you've got three guys there. He's very fortunate he didn't get that ball stolen and I'm sure Coach Fisher will show him that on the films. That's when you're in the film room. The coach plays it back nine, 10 times. You say, I see it already, Coach, I see it. So then why did you bounce it? But players, also though, fans are wrong when they say a big guy should never put the ball on the floor. Yes, you can. There are times when you're trying to get a position and a power move, but you can put it on the floor. That wasn't one of them. Indiana's possession, they lead it 14-9. Cheney wanted Anderson, good defense. Hunter though couldn't get it out. And Meeks will get to the free throw line. And Brett, we talked about before, you got to keep Indiana off the free throw line. They've actually made more foul shots than their opponents have attempted this year. And that's without a tremendous power game. So that means they are really working the ball well. And there you see it already, 18 fouls to two. One and one, they'll be in the two shot situation. We're still, uh, my goodness, haven't played half the first half. But Indiana, is uh, not taking advantage of it. They're shooting poorly again at the line here today. <laughs> now checking in is Chris Reynolds, defensive specialist, and sitting down is Jamal Meeks. He did a good job as a starter here today. And for Michigan, Rich McIver, 6'9", forward, a freshman out of Freeport, Texas. Checks into that lineup. Vasco will sit down. So McIver and Riley up front will try to give Michigan a little bulk. They trail at 15-9. And Caleb still on the bench. The leading scorer. Still sitting next to Coach Fisher. There he drew the foul. And it's against Greg Graham. Easy to say, difficult to do. They always say, don't leave your feet until the man you're guarding leaves his feet. I think I said that Vasco was checking out. He was obviously not as he has come up to the free throw line. So with Vasco in there, with Riley and McIver, that is now a very big front line. But Vasco is a young man who was battling a foot problem earlier in the season. In fact, underwent surgery and now has made it back to the starting lineup. And he can surprise you. For a big youngster, he can bring his game to the outside. He has a good shooting form, as you can see there at the free throw line. He's had a nice stroke. They're back to within four. Smooth Cheney set that up. Wonderful move to the, to the inside. Goes back up after the rebound and drew the foul. That's on Michael Talley, number 14. One more to go, and they'll be shooting two the rest of the way. They're at nine. It's nine to three. Getting an idea of how Indiana works its way to the free throw line, which you've been pointing out here, Jimmy. They've got to convert these free throws. I mean, and they were such a, a fine free throw shooting, shooting team just a, about a week or so ago. It's one of those things, though. The more you talk about it, Brent, you know, as a coach, you try not to talk that much about free throw shooting. You try to work on it instead. Lead at six. 12 minutes left in the first half here in Bloomington. Tally bringing the ball up, not Caleb. Busco bangs in one. And that's four points, the two free throws, and now the field goal. Arizona up one on Duke. Damon Bailey on the inside. The crowd here in Indiana loves to cheer the young man. He, he's the biggest hero I've seen in Bloomington since the days of Steve Alford. Tolbert maneuvering for the Wolverines. Couldn't get the roll, and Eric Anderson with another defensive rebound. Good spin by Graham Reynolds, Cheney. Corner, beautiful basketball by the Hoosiers. Off the rebound, Cheney from the corner, 21-13. That's nine points for Cheney.
Riley will bring the crowd back down to its seat. Now it's Anderson. That's a two. That's seven for Anderson. So the two big guns have taken off offensively here. Normally speaking, when you're on the road, you want to try to get the ball inside when you're trying to get back into it. But as you mentioned, Michigan doesn't have a true inside game. When Riley gets it, he doesn't get on the low post. Oh, outstanding pass. Had difficulty getting the handle on the ball. So Rich McIver could not get control of a wonderful pass. And we'll be coming right back. Michigan 15. Jimmy, what do you see? Well, it's really both clubs haven't been as effective as you would think. But they've had a lot of unforced turnovers, missed free throws. But what's happening here is, is Indiana is taking away the one thing that Michigan normally does so well, and that's the perimeter game. And that's because Indiana pushes out and they guard you on the perimeter. This will shock you. Bob Knight was working on one of the referees. <laughs> I mean, he was upset about the, the, the charge call he did. 9-3, team fouls in his favor, and he spent the time out working on a referee. It's supposed to be 9 nothing. <laughs> they didn't foul anybody. Bailey. And up on the inside. And the foul is whistled against Indiana. And we want to remind everybody that because of the events unfolding in the Persian Gulf, Ted Koppel and ABC News. Eastern time with Ted Koppel and the ABC News team. Here we have 9.45 to go in the first half. 23-15, Indiana make it 17 as Michigan came right down the baseline that time with Kirk Taylor. Coach Knight not going to like that because the weak side help should be over there to get that charge. Taylor made a great play, though. Anderson loves it outside, but that allows Taylor to get the rebound on the inside. One of the problems Grand Indiana has been having, especially even at home too, is they just they're not getting that lead and extending it. Oh, what a charge that was! Bosco bouncing in with his shoulder commits his third personal. That was an easy call. Watch this. Lower that shoulder. Bam! Knock him down. There's the tenth. Mark it down, 9-13, wow. and Indiana shooting to the rest of the way, already up by six as Caleb checks back in for the Wolverines. At home, you don't like to let clubs hang around within that two, three bucket area. That's when you get in trouble late in the ball game if you don't make your free throws. Reynolds, good defense, and Anderson is there. You see how different they are when Anderson's game is on the inside rather than the outside. And as you pointed out, if they had that one other big man down low, oh, they'd be tough to deal with. And they are getting a great one next year. Young man named Alan Henderson in 6'10", they tell me, plays like Danny Manning. That's good enough. Shoot it, dribble it, the whole thing. Very gifted player. Caleb and Taylor and Tally, and this is Taylor hitting the three. Young man playing very well right now, and it's 25 to 20. Michigan, on the other hand, about the three-point line, they take approximately 15 three-point shots a game, but it shows you a good job that Indiana's done by pushing out. That's their uh, first thing. Bailey comes right back with a three of his own. He's not going to be scoreless in this one. He's already hit on the inside. And now has a total of five. Tally. Tap back misses for the Wolverines. Bailey dribbling out. And it's going to be Indiana ball. So we're going to take a break here. 7.51. Fisher arguing that Bailey just lost control. We'll be right back about the rule on this. I don't have my official quick guide to the rules, but I do believe that Damon Bailey, uh-uh, he throws that out of bounds. The referee hit it, but the ref is the part of the court. That ball is off Damon Bailey. If you're wrong, I'm sure we'll hear about it. I think I'm right. My dad refed for 30 years. <laughs> 
Graham short. But Indiana digs it out underneath. Lyndon Jones and the crowd applauds that. Indiana's little guys are doing a great job on the glass. They have to get help for Anderson underneath, no question about that. And the foul is on Riley, a pushing foul, his second. It is going to be tough for Michigan to overcome the foul situation because let me point out, 725, Indiana shoots two free throws on every foul for the rest of this half. There are only four team fouls against Indiana. Michigan's not even shooting one on one yet. This could make this a 12, 13 point number at the half. Incidentally, Brent, the referee's official interpretation was that he caused the ball to go out of bounds. Therefore, it is awarded back to, to Indiana. However, I think he's wrong in the sense that the ball was going out well, of bounds. Can't, can't wiggle out now. No, I'm right. Can't. He's wrong. I understand <laughs> what he's saying. If he caused that, it. Uh, Glimness that, won't count. That he's wrong. You've got to be right on the rule. Here's Riley. Turn around. Got to roll. Look for Indiana to make some kind of an adjustment. Riley, they're forcing him out high to get the ball, but that's twice he's caught it and Jimmy, been able to make that turnaround jumper. Jimmy, what kind of strategy can a coach use when he's facing such a foul dilemma and behind here 30 to 22? What would you do? Well, one of the things you look at is going to a zone defense, right? And it's since Indiana, the, oh, what a pass by David Barron. What vision, what important vision he had. And Cheney with another field goal. Now he's scored 11 points. Now let me follow up on that. If you're playing a club like Indiana, it doesn't take a lot of three-point shots. As There's Caleb's three. Does, and he finally gets one. You can go to a zone with the idea they're not going to take a lot of them and, and protect your, your, your foul situation, but they're staying in man-to-man. -man. Down away from the ball. And this one's going to go against Indiana. This is on Jones. There are some things you don't teach. This is one of them. Court vision. Got that one right in there for two points, and I'll tell you that... More that beautiful importantly than that, he got it right where a left-handed shooter could handle the ball and just swing on around with it. So often you see somebody hurry a pass like that, and the receiver can't do anything with it even if he gets the ball, but that one was just perfect, Johnny. See, Anderson now defensively, he's got trying to deny the ball to Riley. Because he's, so he's got pushing Riley out. Now Riley tries to swing past him. McIver's 44. The step out by Talley. Three point basket, three points. Michael Talley, number 14. So Michael Talley makes it a 32 27 game here. Five and a half minutes to go in the first half. Greg Graham, high bounce, contact underneath. Whistle by Ed Hightower, our lead official here today. Fisher talking to McIver about that play. Matt Nover will replace Anderson at the 530 mark, give him his first breather of the game. The injury to see, you always wonder, are the guys on the bench watching? Is Nover going to stand behind the big guy, Riley, or is he going to front him when they work that stack to the side? Good job, he's fronting him. He paid attention. And I'm sure Coach Knight, Coach Ellenberger, and the rest of them down there were paying attention, too. Forcing one from the outside. Indiana comes down with the rebound. Meeks to Bailey. And Bailey up on top and smooth Cheney. He's really silk. If you want a nickname for him, wow. Unbelievable. They were forced to call a timeout because no one would take the ball out of bounds, Brent. That's twice. That's twice that Michigan has been unable to find someone to take the ball out of bounds. There are so many ways that makes a coach gray. Here's one of them. Calvin Chini makes the basket right there. Now look at this, Michael Talley. He says, you take it out. My job's not to take it out. Steve Fisher's take it out. No one will take the ball out of bounds. <laughs> Gotta call a timeout. How'd you like to not have a timeout late in the game? The guy says, my job is not taking the ball out of bounds, Talley said. Someone else take it out. I want to shoot it down the other end. Caleb and Talley. 
Bring the ball up this time. And I know that. That was my job for four years, Brent. My job was take the ball out of bounds, give it to a guy named Bob Lloyd. Tally heard about it during the timeout while you were away at commercial. 429 left in the first half, 34-27. Indiana scored the first field goal of the game, and they have led it all the way. They're trying to snap a two-game losing streak. Both losses, heartbreakers in overtime. It's possible that the Hoosiers did not recover after losing to Ohio State. Got complacent against Iowa after building a big lead, and now they're trying to shake that two-game losing streak. Riley just got hit in the head with the rebound. John Wooden used to say that you should keep your hands in, when you're going to rebound always above your, your shoulders, at least above your waist. And if you do that, you get an opportunity when a ball comes quickly. Boom. And you see, you see where his hands were? If Riley's hands were up, he would have had that. Although he did a nice job of heading it uh, to a teammate, which might have been the play. I'm not sure. Cheney committing his second personal foul of the game. Putting Eric Riley, 6'11", 215 pounds, a sophomore in eligibility out of the Cleveland area. Nine points for Riley. Michigan, despite the foul discrepancy, hanging in here in the first half. They're a 17-point underdog here in Bloomington this afternoon. Nova put the ball down, and there's a push-off. Right now, we're not here's what really hurts, because they weren't shooting, but yet you get two, two uh -huh. free throws. And another thing Michigan's opted to do, Brent, although they're not playing zone, is they are not guarding Jamal Meeks. They are getting off him to try to get help on, on drivers and, and people like uh, Cheney, and they're not even guarding Meeks. Huge gamble now by the Michigan coaching staff. That's what they were conferring about. That is the third personal on Riley. Mm -hmm. Now, Riley's looking over at the bench to see if they aren't going to make a move here. 3.57. And it looks like they might be sending Mitchell in. You have to send him in right now to Sam have any Mitchell. chance. Substitution for Michigan, number 40, Sam Mitchell. Yeah, so Riley will sit down with three personals, 36-29 and 3.57 left in the first. <laughs> Steve Fish, you can hear him. You can hear him in Ann Arbor. He said, take it out, Kirk. Does anybody want to take the ball out of bounds? Knocked away and back to Taylor. And the three-point field goal for Michael Talley. What does that get you back in games in a hurry? Look at Meeks. They're not guarding Meeks. Look at that. He has a free throw. Take it. Take it. Oh, you got to take that shot. There he will. Thank you very much. You have to do that. But you know something, Brent? If he misses that shot, he becomes what we call a self-check. He won't take it again. You know, when a guy misses a wide open shot, it's a tough shot to take. So for Indiana and for Jamal Meeks, he's glad that went in. Almost intercepted. Good hustling defense underneath. And because of the foul and the situation, we'll shoot two here at the other end. Wow, this is really going to be difficult to overcome this foul situation that Michigan has. Talked about it at the top. Indiana does a good job of, of getting to the free throw line. Their motion offense, they have players, uh, especially a Calbert Cheney, who could take it to the basket. They, they also have a lot of the small guys like Lyndon Jones uh, and, uh, uh, you know, Bailey, who go to the basket and, get, and also get fouled on rebounds. But as the season progresses, we go to NCAA play, you get the feeling that they just don't have enough ammunition. They just don't have Indiana the big guy, you know, to, to go that far in a club that has everything else, really. 15 points. Albert Cheney, a sophomore from Evansville, with a 15-point first half, three minutes to go. Michigan in foul trouble. Talley has it knocked away. The Indiana half-court defense sets it up, and here's Mix. Nice shot by Lyndon Jones to run interference there. And suddenly it's a 10-point margin, 42 to 32. Riley.
Conley out with three fouls definitely affecting Michigan here at the offensive end. But no one to go to inside. They have to score on the drive. Another turnover. Bailey. Here's where Michigan Greg, could use that timeout, even though there's two minutes, but they already took one because they couldn't get the ball in bounds. Three by Caleb. So Demetrius rattles in his second three of the half. Cheney. I know we're not to use the word great and throw it around lightly. But we've seen this young man play several times and in practice with, with his work ethic, Brent, he is a great basketball player, Calvin Cheney. Meeks commits the personal out on top. A reminder of what we've got coming up at halftime. We'll have an update on the war over in the Persian Gulf from ABC News. And we'll go to the college basketball scoreboard with John Saunders and Beth Ruiak. And Beth is going to take a look at Harold Miner from the University of Southern California and that's a very enjoyable feature Jim you and I previewed it prior to the start of this game and I think basketball fans are going to enjoy that a look at kind of an unsung star in the game terrific player and I'm happy for George Raveling who's worked long and hard with the Trojans to get them on that left side of the column in Jones possession here's Damon Bale Got him the foul, and they'll shoot two more free throws. Next Saturday on ABC Sports, that combination that's so familiar to millions of sports fans, the bowling's best will take aim at the 150,000. I'd like to mention right now that a week from tonight, I believe it's week tonight, my bowling team will challenge once again Brent Musburger's <laughs> bowling squad, and you will go down again to ignominious Defeat. The My cameramen is. have been working two a days, very lengthy practices. We never have to attend classes. Brent, you're going down again. Get ready in Ann Arbor. I don't know if there's a bowling alley big enough to hold this event. Misfire now underneath. Great defense. Indiana ball. Well, Steve Fisher's club is so handicapped right now. When Riley goes to the bench, they just don't have the inside-outside game that you must have to be an effective basketball team. You know what kind of half they've had? They have had an NIT half here in Bloomington. <laughs> oh, he almost rammed it in. And then he goes back and gets it. That was Damon Bailey. And still Hoosiers ball. They'll go for one shot. They'll bring it back out now and go for the last shot. Indiana's guards are dominating the boards here. Ready, ready, At 10 seconds, they like to go. Look for a screen across. There it is. They worked on this in practice yesterday. Working against the clock. Nover. Wonderful against the clock. They did not give Michigan any time. They exhausted it here in the first half, and Nover comes up with the field goal that makes it 48 35. So, coming up, we're going to have an update from ABC News in just a moment. To Hadley because the rebounding. Brent is just as the statistics, I can't say that word, statistics will show they're tied in rebound, really just one up. So if they shoot the ball well, 
They get to the free throw line, they win basketball games in Vienna. That was the 14th turnover. Meeks, Anderson with the ball, Jones, Cheney, and Greg Graham on the floor for Indiana. Cheney, the high point score in the game with his first field goal, 19 for the game. 19 of Indiana's 50. You lay off Cheney, hits the three. You get out late on him, he drives by you. He's having a great game. Riley with three fouls back on the floor. Taylor now handling the ball. This is Tally, Bosco, and Caleb, 13, shooting the three. That's his third three of the game. It's interesting. They shut down Riley by fronting him, and that time they stayed behind him again. He was able to kick it back outside for the three-point shot. Again, I think you'll see them deny Riley the basketball. Anderson got to the inside. The defensive man on his hip and no chance. Caleb gets inside, short on the jumper, battles back for the rebound. Good hustle by Demetrius Caleb. And that time it wouldn't stay down, but there is Caleb again. Now Cheney breaks out, great pass. He hit Greg Graham beautifully. Wow, that's an outstanding pass and catch. Didn't bounce the ball and laid it in. They're at that point now against Iowa. They had a 16-point lead. Bosco is fouled. Calbert Cheney does a little bit of everything for Indiana. Look at the, oh, look at that. See the face up? Oh, uh, young players watching that. You see Cheney? He had the ball and his eyes were up the court. Look at that. A lot of players, I remember when I played, I used to read the ball, Spalding and say, inflate six to eight ounces. Bosco with a good outside shot, hits the three. One thing to keep in mind, Cheney now saddled with three personal fouls. Like Riley of Michigan, Cheney with three. And Cheney got the roll. 21 points. He's got that nice touch. See, see, Anderson now is denying the ball to Riley. They make adjustments. Man-to-man -man defense is a good learning defense. You, they beat you on a play one time. You make an adjustment, and you stop it the next time. Indiana does that well. Foul against Indiana. That's their second team foul already, and none against Michigan. It was reversed. Here, here you First see half. there's Anderson and Riley, and there is exactly the point I'm getting at. Look at Anderson trying to stay in front of the big man because when he doesn't do that, Riley is a very good turnaround jump shooter, and he also passes the ball fairly well. So the idea is to don't let him catch it. Now, one thing about Coach Knight, if he gets too far behind in that foul category, he will go to work verbally on the official. You can bet on that. Lead pass is beautiful underneath. That time Graham couldn't put it away. He was in a little bit too far underneath the basket, and it's now Caleb on the receiving end for the layup, and it's 56-43. You know, Brent, how these things play in your mind as we see Michigan going to some pressure here. Meeks drives on the inside, gives it to Anderson. See, Indiana, when they have these three guards in there, really it's not a good club to press because they're able to really get through it pretty good. The good ball handling uh, basketball team. What was I going to say is that what's on Indiana's mind, it has to be. When you're not shooting free throws well, right, you worry about it a little bit. When you had a 15-point lead, you worry about it a little bit. Let's check in with Mark Jones, Mark. Yeah, guys, Coach Knight at halftime telling his team he was very happy about the fact they contained Demetrius Caleb on offense. And he was getting points, mind you, but not within the offense. But the big key, he said, was the bench, getting a big spark from the bench, something they did not get in the last game. Back to you guys. All right, Mark, thank you. Caleb with four this half already, and he's been playing with what appears to be a little more determination. Moving without the ball, he has demanded it, now has it, passes into Bosco. Inside pass gets away, Indiana breaks out. Lead to Meeks, who was fouled. Allie Fowler. That was really a nice play by Meeks. That pass could have been a turnover. It wasn't just a, a wide open situation. Lyndon Jones looks ahead, throws it, and it, now it's a foot race. And Meeks, oh, 
just gets there, controls the ball. That's one of those fouls as a coach you just don't want to see. You know, when you think about what Iowa produced here the other night, mm -hmm. down by 16, one in overtime, we probably should think about taking the Hawkeyes off any bubble at all and put them in the NCAA tournament. Ah, uh, Brent, you made a lot of folks in Iowa very happy with that one, didn't you? <laughs> Why don't you stick to your guns? <laughs> but when you take a look at the NCAA My tournament God. this year, <laughs> Brent, as they just got off the bubble, Iowa did. You know, the teams are going to be able to get in this year, I think 16 wins. It looks that way. Yeah, he's playing with much more fire here in this half. 59-45, Demetrius Caleb, 16 minutes to go. Michigan knowing they have to win this game to have any chance at all, and they still face a tough schedule after this. But this will be an elimination game for the Wolverines from the NCAA if they drop this one. Caleb reaching in on Jones. Not liking the call. It was kind of ticky-tack, wasn't it? We'll take a break here at the 15:45 mark. Indiana has led it all the way. Still burn in Coach Knight's belly when one of his players goes to the line and misses. Let's check in with Mark Joe. Mark, were you okay? You didn't get hit by anything. Well, not quite, guys. But you think Bobby Knight's a hard guy to please? Well, Calbert Cheney just was read the Knight Riot Act, and the funny thing is. He's got 21 points in the game. I'd hate to see if he was in position, like right there. That's 23, but what affects Coach Knight is rebounding position and blocking out and things like that. Yes, yesterday's practice, we're not worried about Cheney offensively. It's being in the right spot defensively. And he felt that that's what cost him a couple of games, not being where they're supposed to be on the defensive end of the floor. Riley keeps it alive and still couldn't come up with a field goal for Michigan. Jim, and we should point out, because we've watched practice sessions here in the last couple of weeks, and have gone out. We are both fans of Bob Knight. He, he demands perfection. And if you are the kind of young man who can handle that, that aggressive style of coaching, it's a, it's a tremendous experience. His players, almost to a man who come away after four years, it's interesting to listen to them, and they, and they enjoyed being around Coach Knight and the whole Indiana atmosphere. Well, I love watching practices. I like a lot of coaches' practices. There are so many outstanding coaches in the country, but it's just nice to watch when you come and see Coach Knight and how he talks about the whole, the game as a whole, and how you have to, you know, it's all five players being in the right spot at the same time and, and, and then working as a unit. And it's just, I enjoy practices immensely. Cheney. What's that? 23? 25. 25 points for Cheney. And he's, and he's not blocking out. <laughs> and that's right. He better block out. Bosco. Anderson finally. Damon Bailey. Indiana gets it back. Cheney again, now it's 27. He's got the rhythm. You know, you get a shooter who feels it, and obviously Cheney does right now, because he's just, just taking and just stroking it home. Caleb. Into the hands of Meeks. On about. Foul, Michigan. Here's how you get open in the Indiana scheme of things. Calbert Cheney never stops moving there. He sets the screen, and then he, what, the man who's the most open is who? The guy who sets the screen. He screens, and then he faded to the corner, got the ball, and put it right back up. Cheney only a sophomore. And speaking, Brent, of sophomores and juniors and underclassmen, I wonder how many are going to come out this year. You've got 
You got Anderson. Pat Graham is in. Uh huh. You got Anderson from Georgia Tech. O'Neill from LSU. Owens from Syracuse. Morning from Georgetown. Jimmy Jackson. What do you think? I think I think Jackson's staying. Morning staying. I think that uh, Owens is going. Anderson's going. And O'Neill. I don't think he's decided yet. You know what I find interesting, Jimmy? Nobody ever asked me if Calvert Cheney's going. They always know he's going to stay. I'll ask. Is he going? Oh, he stays. Okay, that's what we don't ask you, Brent. <laughs> The only one who ever left here early was Lawrence Funderburg. <laughs> he went to That's Columbus. another story. <laughs> That's another story. Uh-oh. It was picked off by Reynolds, wasn't it? Number four, there is Tony Tolbert, the, the man that Knight feared. That's his first field goal of the game. Great pass on the inside, and Reynolds sends it back. He knew he didn't have a shot. Pat Graham jumps it back to Reynolds. Look at this, and it wouldn't stay down. Michigan now busting out. Tolbert, two in a row. Why he It always happens. There's always one guy who plays well against a particular team that Tolbert loves to see. The Indiana Hoosiers. See Michigan's finally gone to a little zone defense. Rimmed out for Bailey. Ooh, Tolbert came out of there aggressively, didn't he? Short. Gets it back. Riley, who's been quiet here in the second half. Brent Michigan really working hard on the boards. And here's that point in the game, right? They go to a zone. Let's see if they make a comeback, Michigan. Indiana's had leads at home and has given them up. Let's take a look. That was Riley's first field goal of the second half. Total of 11 for the game. Reynolds has it rejected. And if that's on Riley, that's his fourth. Let's see who it's on. No, it's on 44. Tom McIver. His third. Here we see against the zone that penetration, which should not be permitted. Must have got him with his body because up high, he certainly did not get him Must with his Must have hand. been real low his body. Maybe his knees he got him with. <laughs> I didn't really see much there, Brent, but must have <laughs> no, been real either. low. Lower body foul. Oh, look at They must have brought someone from Syracuse in here to instruct on shooting free throws. <laughs> you are cold today, <laughs> Mr. Musburger. <laughs> We've got a timeout. 11-36, 68-53, Hoosiers. Basketball coach, too. That's right, she was a coach. Both. 20th year. The general has done some legendary job here in Indiana. I can remember what Branch McCracken accomplished and watched some of his teams in his later stages of his fabulous career. Didn't think anybody could match that. And Knight has exceeded anybody who's been down here. Riley on the turnaround. Cheney rebounds. Here's Jones. Ships it into Bayman Bailey. Brent, they find people. Indiana's playing very, very well. Very alert basketball. As we said, they practiced well, but I did expect them to play well. So after two heartbreaks in overtime, the Hoosiers are headed back for the W column. And they force another turnover. Five-second violation. That's 17 Michigan turnovers in a critical game for them. And that's with... Two very good guards. I mean, it's not like they don't have good guards. They have two very good guards. Very small team right now for Michigan. Caleb kept it. Graham blocked it. Tolbert, who wanted it on the pass when they came down the floor. Riley on the turnaround. Easy with that size advantage when he gets it where he wants it. When Riley gets the ball, he can't score. There's no doubt about it. He's got a nice touch. He's a good player. 
They get some more players with them. Michigan will be back. Well, Duke and Arizona battling for a number one seed. And now I think Indiana has stepped back into that situation where they must be included in that battle for the top seed in the East. Tolbert couldn't handle, then he got sealed up. With the club Michigan has in there, you're going to look, I think, for some pressure, some running, some uh, three-point attempts, and also they're going to have to try to drive and go to the basket. Those four things they're going to look at to try and get back in it. They shoot it to Bailey, and he hits Anderson in the corner. Just slicing him up, Brent. The offense is just slicing him up inside, outside. Wisconsin staying alive. Beating Northwestern by three up in Madison. There's the penetration. We have a small club in there. You're going to take those threes. You're going to race it up the court in transition, penetrate, and apply some pressure. The four things you're going to do to try and get back in, although right now they're not pressuring very much. Bailey's three. That's 14 for Damon Bailey. And there's the three. He's a strong rebounder, isn't he, for a freshman guard? Bailey really yeah, it's good. It's good, and it's a block. Oh, he's very strong. Let me remind everybody that ABC News and Ted Koppel will be coming along with a news special, The Gulf War, at 6.30 Eastern Time. Now, we will be finishing in about 30 minutes, so obviously some stations will immediately go to local news. There's probably also an early news feed coming out of New York at 6 o'clock, and then a special that I think everyone's going to want to see at uh, 6.30 tonight with Ted Koppel, the Gulf War. They'll tell you what's unfolded over there, day two of the, of the ground war over the Persian Gulf. Here it is, 78-57, Indiana with a lead on Michigan trying to break that two-game losing streak, and they have this one in hand, no question about it. Tapped in by Riley. I am, I am now told that there is not. As Bailey comes through for a layup, there is no early feed uh, network news, so there will be local news coming up at 6 o'clock. Then we will go to the ABC News special. Here we've got a break. It's all Indiana, 80 to 59. Have though, these three-point shooters. Caleb hit a two, and he has scored 21 for the game. They can't trade baskets at this point, and they're going to have to have some defensive stops and make runs here to get back in this. Oh, Cheney. Brent's not going to see anything prettier than that particular sequence. The great pass underneath, the touch pass, the layup and the foul. That is absolutely beautiful basketball. Thirty points for Cheney. Caleb again. It's been his show in the second half, but is it enough? The basket is by Demetrius Caleb, number 13. Meek's shaken up. Substitution for Indiana. It's number 20, Greg Graham. Going in for the Greg Graham, Graham will replace him. <laughs> and they attend the young man's right leg, so. He was a starter today against Michigan. This is when depth plays a factor. When all of your players do play. Caleb, a one-man machine. 25 points for Demetrius Caleb. He can really score, I'll tell you. Riley's fourth personal. Oh, no, check that. Let's see who it's on. 
No, they kind of, they called it goaltending. They called it goaltending not sure and not that. a foul. That, wow. That was going up, Brent. I don't think that was a good call. Looked like Bo was on his way up. You know who, Caleb again. Eighty-five, sixty-five, seven minutes. Knight working with Greg Graham, very concerned about the twenty-point lead. That clipboard is bruised. <laughs> Fisher taking his time, getting Rob Palenka onto the floor. Bosco fouling out. Bosco will be replaced in the lineup by number three, Rob Palenka. Leaves with seven points. So Palenka replaces him. And sophomore Pat Graham at the free throw line. If he starts missing free throws, Pat Graham, then you know you're in trouble. Brennan's an 86% free throw shooter. He'll nail them both. reference to the number one seeds and uh, I think now with this performance we could add Indiana to the east. Well, I still think you're going to look at a Syracuse North Carolina you know number one in the east to be quite honest with you Brent. Uh, I look at the rest of Arkansas as a lock Ohio State's a lock in Vegas and then there's someone out there right now right a coach using the coach's creed when it comes to the uh, NCAA is please don't let me draw Princeton. Every, every coach in America who makes the tournament says, please, the basketball guys, do not let me play Princeton in the first game. But someone will have to. I love the coach who says, please don't let me play Princeton, and has to play UNLV in the second game. <laughs> Damon Bailey dribbles out. Beautiful pass on the inside to Graham. The entry passes to the baseline today by all of Indiana's players. Bailey, Jones, Graham, everybody. It's been a clinic. Malenko. Foul against Indiana. And that's number four on Cheney. The crowd doesn't want to see him foul out. He's already scored 30 points. They'd like to see a 40-point game. It's his career high he has tied, and they want to see him break it here this afternoon. A link on a runner. Cheney goes after the rebound. The outlet pass winds up where he does not want him to go. He does not want that man on the receiving end of that pass. He did not walk over and have him handing the ball. <laughs> it was a good outlet pass tonight, I thought so. And he should have gotten rid of it quicker, I thought, Brent. He should have passed it to Havlin. And his passing game, he's got to get rid of it more quickly than that. <laughs> Knight did not have the good entry. No, pass. it was I mean, three it... bounces. He, you know. Go down to the end of the bench. He cannot be unhappy, and I know he's not with this performance today, because they have played very well offensively, defensively, especially the passing has been exceptional. Right on the money in the half-court offense. Anderson gets a nice round of applause as he trots off. Now, talking about those seeds, how would you like to be UCLA? He's having a great year, and maybe they wind up in the West, <laughs> right? And they have to play Vegas, right? All those years, all the other teams hated to be in UCLA's region, right? Because they had no shot. Cheney has a 30-point afternoon, and misses again at the line. Isn't that the way it is sometimes? Goes over. Bounce pass. Bounce pass. They get two points for Michigan that time. 
And Cheney sits down. Greg Graham coming down the baseline. Well, tonight, a big league network premiere. Kevin Costner in a comedy that really has got everything. Bull Durham tonight at 9, 8 Central. What do you think Costner would get as a free agent? About 3.5 a year as a backup catcher for somebody? <laughs> He's having a pretty good year, isn't he? Yeah, I'd say. Man can dance with the wolves. Call a fastball for the Durham Bulls. Riley up over the top. Just not falling for the Wolverines. They really weren't catching Indiana at the right time for a club that had to get a win. That's right. Yep. Palenka turns it over again. Now for turnovers today for Michigan, that is 20. Okay, so now we have out of the Big Ten, five teams, right, Brett? We have Indiana, Ohio State, Michigan State, Iowa. Who else? Is there another one? Get four or five. Wisconsin. They got only 13 to have a little bit of a chance, but they too would have to win out, right? It's going to be four. They're going to have four teams from a high of seven last year down to four. And how about the Big East? They may get eight. I would not bet against the Big Ten politically if Wisconsin can put a move on. Lewis, the Big Ten has been so valuable to that tournament through the years. Of course, I'm pulling for Wisconsin. I just think it'd be a nice story if the youngsters got yep. in. I think it'd be great. Damon Bailey sits down, and the coach's son fires up an air ball. Pat Knight with a miss. Oh, do you think Pat Knight's going to hear about that in the film room from his teammates uh, when he comes in? Oh, that's going to be, going to be some Taylor. lines there. Hits the field goal. Final five minutes winding down for an Indiana win. Let's take a look at the, in the Big Ten. Now, Iowa, even though they're only seven and eight in the Big Ten, they've already won 18 games in, and came in and won. In. So they go in. They yeah, go off the bubble, the bubble and in. Michigan goes out. out. That leaves only Wisconsin and only 12, 12 wins. No way. I mean, they got to win all the way. And you know who they have to play? They've got this squad going to Wisconsin. They got to beat Indiana at home, which obviously, if they did that, would give them a sure. tremendous impact. They can. Sure. So you they are up. very tough at home. A chance. But then, but what if they beat Indiana but only get a couple more wins? And they only got 15. What do you do then, Brent? I still take five for the Big Ten. Boy, you are something. <laughs> are you the commissioner of the Big Ten or what? Uh, Jim Delaney is going to give me a commission if I get five in. Chris Lawson will see his first play in time. The sophomore from Bloomington South. And over out. It's a nice round of applause. Matt's a junior. Young Indiana team. Caleb. Lawson goes aggressively after it. Yeah, Coach Fisher said this one's going to be tough if we get behind, and he was right. He knew that Indiana. They were not going to ease up today if they got the big lead. If you lose a couple of games, Brent, all coaches want a couple of things to happen. Number one, a good practice. A practice where you work hard on both ends. Number two, they want to take that practice and put it into the game situation. Bob Knight's got to be very pleased with what's happened today after two very tough losses. And that was a three by Taylor. Foul against Palenka. And in my continuing effort, to bring to the public what a Hoosier is. If you recall, two weeks ago, we asked everyone who sits behind us here. Yes. They don't know what a Hoosier is. They gave us all kinds of ideas about people from Kentucky coming and saying, who's there, who's there? Mm -hmm. That was one. Well, gentlemen behind me, just tap me on the shoulder, and here is the definitive answer. 
all the small towns in Indiana, everyone knows everyone else. And so they'd meet, they'd meet a kid, they'd say, who's your mother, who's your father? And so they became known as Hoosiers, <laughs> Brent, and that hopefully puts that to rest. Well, the Hoosier mother and fathers can be proud about the Hoosiers performance here today. We're coming right back. Coach, folks, very concerned about the second half, first five minutes. He really, he's done a Look at the job. face. Look That's at a football that. coach's exactly. face. Exactly. Smile, Bill. No, he's, oh, no, he's focusing right now. He's thinking about the linebackers have to do right That's now. That's right. He's thinking about the Michigan football game. Oh. He's wondering how he can get ahead of him in football like Knight has here in basketball. Are they serious or what? A little pushing off there involving Lawson and Riley, and now it's 96-71. That's why the official came over. Reach around foul on the Wolverines, Kirk Taylor. Next Sunday, we have a doubleheader here on ABC. Michigan State, Ohio State will start it off at 2. Nolan Richard, Tommy Penders from, from Connecticut, and the coach that Fordham went to Texas as the cowboy boots and the hat. The last time they played in Austin, Nolan Richardson took a technical by leaving the building. The game wound up in overtime, and his team came through without him down there, I believe. That's, that the, reason I, that's the reason I never left the building when I coached. You leave it, and the team wins, Michael. and they figure out, we don't need you. Valley hits the field goal. 97-73 now. They did execute here today, didn't they? Reynolds. Graham rebounding is fouled by Michigan. Graham's done a nice job when he's come in. He's passed the ball well. He's rebounded. Personal makes his free throws. Ten team fouls on Michigan and only four on Indiana. So again, Indiana stays out of foul trouble. They've done exactly what uh, they do very, very well. You know what's interesting too, Brent? When Penn State comes into this conference, the number of games, think of the number of games you have to play, even right now in the Big Ten. Right? Are they going to keep the name the Big Ten with 11 teams? Commissioner? No, they're going to keep the Big Ten title. They like the logo. It's going to be called Big Ten with 11, 11 squads in it, huh? Sure. Okay. Be kind of interesting, you know, something for them to think about. You know, they play the round robin in the conference now. That's not, they do not have a Big Ten tournament. You would think with the addition of Penn State, they would seriously consider not playing the round robin, only X number of games during the season, and go to a conference tournament. Can you imagine the crowd for a Big Ten tournament in, let's say, Indianapolis or even up in Pontiac or Chicago or Minneapolis? They could move it around some media centers. It would also up. give them an opportunity to play other uh, schools around the country with some attractive games. Because right now, when you've got so many uh, conference games, really need, leaves no room except for those bops we all like to schedule, those teams that, you know, come in and you, you pay them and they go home, you beat them and they go home. <laughs> I had a lot of those. Bob Knight has led the lobby against the Big Ten tournament, and he said, I won't do it as long as we play the round-robin schedule. Mm -hmm. So you, you do away with that, I'd be glad to go, go play a tournament. Lawson. Lawson's lighting them up out here. Two for two, four points. I'll tell you an interesting thought for the future they're, they're making so much money off their football program now that they probably wouldn't consider it intercepted by indiana i think everybody has to consider notre dame as a possible 12th team in the big 10 someday a roll in you think notre dame would consider that uh, you know given what it does for the rest of your athletic environment the fact that your other teams can play in a conference which is one of the reasons why joe paterno wanted to come into the big 10 but again, you know, obviously Notre Dame's football like stands alone economically and, and they wouldn't probably consider it right now. But I wouldn't, that certainly wouldn't shock me at all. The, the two schools, Jimmy, that I think would make it 12, one would be Notre Dame and the other one to consider is Nebraska. Greg, you have been an absolute fountain of information. Either that or misinformation. You're putting teams in the NCAA, <laughs> taking them out. We got Notre Dame in the 
in the Big Ten. We still got a minute and a half. What else are you going to come up with here? 104-76. Loss and rebounded. We got Notre Dame and Nebraska. We got a 12-team league. No round robin tournament. <laughs> We're going to have Brent Musburger. He's finally done it. We have 19 teams in the Big Ten. Bring them all in. <laughs> well, listen, Texas, Texas A&M were within a vote of going to the Pac-10. Did you know that? And I'm to the ACC League, which I uh, came from, will not be too long. Then I go, it goes to 10 teams. not going to stay with nine. It's going to go with another squad. Absolutely. <laughs> What else do you want to bring up right now, Brent? Let me see. Number 23, Kirk Taylor. Taylor replacing Pally. 105-76. Minute 27 to go. And tomorrow night, I believe it's tomorrow night, New Mexico State hosts Las Vegas, which will be the last chance anyone has to beat them. And, and I'm going on record I'm right now. And Reynolds comes out. Moving in on that point total of 109 against Illinois, their highest production of the season. They're within one. Hey, but Indiana has two very tough games on the road, Brett. They've got to go to Michigan State and to Wisconsin. So as excited as they are and, and as excited as the coaches, Bob Knight mentioned that a lot of people felt after his own team, after the Ohio State game, and they came back, everybody said, hey, you got what a great game. You guys were great that they may have believed it a little bit too much. If you have a game like this, you got to get refocused when you go on the road against two really tough clubs. Crowd wants that field goal. There it is, their high total of the year. 110-76 over Michigan. I'd love to be in the locker room after this game, though, because I know what all coaches do after you say, great job, men, then you start to attack them a little bit. Sure, you know how he can attack them? You missed 15 more free oh, throws today. Oh, he'll attack them, so you got to get yourself focused again. When you win, you can attack your players. When you lose, that's the time you really have to be a little bit more compassionate. Indiana showed how they can respond. This was interesting. The folks here were really kind of uneasy about this team coming into this game, and then they showed them the very, very talented team. Personal it's young. And as we said, Michigan, a good recruiting year. If they can get where Mr. Weber goes, will be a big decision for a lot of squads right now out there. But Juwan Howard coming in. Officer McLean behind me said that my Hoosier story is incorrect. <laughs> When we get to Ann Arbor next week, will you find out what a Wolverine is for me, Jimmy? <laughs> See if you can get it down, okay? Oh, coach's son turned it over. Bossard with a three. Don't get a lot of calls in the last 10 seconds of play. Final seconds will tick away in Bloomington. Uh, who's your victory? One twelve seventy nine as the field goal is good at the end of the game. Bob Knight and the Indiana Hoosiers get back on the winning track after losing two in a row and they do it impressively. For Jim Dalbano and Mark Jones, I'm Brent Musburger. Right now, let's send you along to John Saunders in New York. John.